What's up fellow Zam Jammers and a warm welcome to everybody who is not subscribed and notified to this YouTube channel. In this video, first of all I'm going to show you the footage of the false resurrection by Pastor slash Prophet Lacau. Then I'm going to show you the media's response to the situation. Then I'll be sharing how I, as a child of God, feel about the situation. And lastly, I'm going to be sharing what several pastors who I've approached have sent me. I approach them because I believe they have morally correct viewpoints and that they are all about what it is to be a Christian, which is love, loving people and not all of the prosperity and all of the miracles and all of that stuff. So yeah, that's what's going to be in this video. Stay tuned and let me know what you think in the comments below. das. Welcome, my mentor, and welcome everybody to this video. Now, I am a child of God, yes, and I share things on my YouTube channel which resonate or which are which are strong feelings that I feel I should talk about. This is a platform to share how I feel. You are not gonna get a video full of ranting and raving and judgment if that is what you wanted to see <laughs> there are so many other videos about that you can go and check that out but i feel myself as a christian i should take this opportunity to share how i feel about the situation simply because the whole situation itself it's like what and the response is also just like guys so i'm gonna walk you through all of that i'm gonna walk you through all of that and and also just share with you what some of the people who I looked up to look up to feel about the situation. Now, here we are in South Africa. I knew that it was going to be a crazy year when the world record egg became the number one liked post on Instagram. And yeah, here we are with crazy things like fake resurrections. We've got Omotoso, we've got Bushiri, and we've got Lakao, and this whole miracles and prosperity gospel thing is just big. It's big and it's got such a big following and so many people are being deceived. I'm just like, guys, what's up? What's up? We're busy chasing the resource and we're not chasing the source. All right. So yeah. This is the footage, if you haven't seen it already. Somebody, he died since Friday. He was in a mortuary. This is a brother. And this is the landlord. And you, who are you? Family members. It's the mother of the, of the wife. But come here, this is the wife. Yes, this is the wife. Come, come here. This is the wife. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Romo Sete. Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. We glorify Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. 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 What is his name? Jesus. <laughs> Elliot. Hello, Elliot. 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 Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. My good God, Nombre. Barabasa Tabasa. Nombre Balisokoto. Mola Soto Koto. Marabo Shika. Mola Basato. Mola Basato. Mola Baharito. Man is commanding life. And now here is some of what the media is saying in response. If it's really true, why don't you then come with us, go with us to Kunu, and let's go and resurrect Mandela, and let's also go to these mortuaries and resurrect the dead. Now, if that doesn't shock you, you should be shook. You should be shook. Why? Because the fact is, by that reasoning, if he can resurrect one person, then why doesn't he go and resurrect a bunch of other people to prove that, you know, he's resurrecting people or that he can? You're, you're losing focus if that's the question you're asking because that discredits all legit resurrections. For example, Angus Buchan, a, a big man of God 
who in the past has prayed for people to be resurrected by the power of God and they have been resurrected. If you haven't seen the movie Faith, Faith Like Potatoes, go and take a look because that happens in there and that's part of his testimony. Now why don't we go to Angus Buchan and ask him, now why don't you go resurrect Nelson Mandela and all of these people because of this and that. That's absolute rubbish. Can I just say that's rubbish. It is God's will to resurrect people. If it is going to happen, it's by His power and not by people's power. And for that reason, you can't just go and resurrect people in the mortuaries. They've come, they've gone. It's sad. It's part of life. And who are you to, like, say it's the will of God to go and resurrect these people? You can go and try and pray for those people to come back to life. I don't know if they are going to. I mean, if it's God's will, maybe a miracle happens and it does. But hey. I mean, at least there, there will be a legit death certificate, not like what we're seeing over here. No, no, guys. Now, I'm going to pose a system on this, on this, like to get to the roots of the issue, because I am, I've studied computer science. It's, I'm all about finding the roots of the problem and moving forward so we can develop a solution. Because what are we doing if we're just judging people and focusing on the problem and not moving forwards we're just going to stay here forever and i don't like this place to be honest i don't like being here where we're just focusing on other people's mess ups and all of the all of the negative when we could be moving forwards and learning from this so that's what we're going to do toyota is a big car company that you probably know because i mean they've made it they've made it work one of the systems which they used was to ask the question why five times over if something is wrong ask what is the problem okay this is overheating okay why is it overheating okay this and that and what so they get to the root of the problem right then they move forward they solve it and here, here they are we know who Toyota is they've obviously done something right I'm gonna I'm gonna use that same system over here I'm gonna ask the question why a few times over so we can get to the root of the problem now sure the first thing this whole fake resurrection story why would someone do that? Well, I believe because currently it is a big thing. Miracles and prosperity, it is populist. It is everywhere, like driving around Joburg, seeing signboards and posters, healing church, come for miracles on Sunday, this and that and all of that stuff. And it is, it is currently very popular. It's like the in thing to, to be doing these things. And obviously someone wanted to take advantage of that. Now you ask, why? Why would someone do that? Because people are looking for the resource and not the source. People are looking for the healing. People are looking for the money and they aren't looking for God and a relationship with God. Now, why is that so? Because unfortunately, we are at that place in South Africa still where poverty is a real thing. Sickness is a real thing and people want solutions. They want fixes for today they want to get money today they want whatever and then you know they want riches they want prosperity and they want miracles how does that work how does that end up working well i don't know let's take a look everyone wants everyone wants to be rich and everyone wants some money everyone wants prosperity so well here take it take it and let me know what you think is that better can you see things can you see what you want can you see what like <laughs> Do you get my point? It's just like that. It's just like that with money. When you start chasing money and prosperity, it distorts the way you see things. It says in the word that Jesus gave us a new commandment and that was to love one another. And by that, people would know that we are his disciples, that we are Christians. Not by miracles or false resurrections or deception or prosperity, not by those things, but by our love for other people. And if you really loved people, you wouldn't wear a suit that could feed five families for a week when you could just wear normal, normal shorts and a t-shirt, <laughs> whatever. There are cheaper suits out there, guys, if you really want to wear a suit. Not by buying cars that could put so many people through university. Not by those things, but by loving people and actually giving that money away so that you have enough, not so much, not so much, guys. Why, why is it such a big thing to, to be rich and to be famous or to be powerful in, or influential and all of these things? It's nice, sure, it's nice and like it solves all of those immediate problems that you have, but that's not what Christianity is about. It's about a relationship with God and loving people and giving 
where you see there's a need all right and giving to the point where you have enough not just so much that's being wasted guys <sighs> I'm making this video because I care about South Africa, I care about South Africans, I care about moving forwards and I care about your salvation guys. I care about the fact that it's about a relationship with God and it's not about the resource. Uh, so that is, that is why I'm making this video, that is why I reached out to a bunch of pastors, people who I look up to and ask them, what do you think about this? And this is what some of them said, I believe that any action to fake any miracle, whether big or small, should be condemned. As much as I believe that miracles, including resur resurrection, are possible and should be done, I believe that they should be done with love and honesty. The second matter on Mboro taking on Lakao in court is very chaotic. If Mboro is sincere in making a good difference, he should have first tried harder to converse with Lakao in a loving manner. Absolutely, I agree that taking on someone in a public manner is not going to help anyone because people have these things called pride and ego and it just often destroys any attempt at making a positive difference because this person will feel all defensive, all the cameras around, all the people around. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible to have a fruitful conversation, but take some discernment and go about it in a loving manner, not in an accusing manner. Furthermore, at the moment, it is hard to conclude on this matter because Lakao denies any claims to have resurrected the man. But to summarize my viewpoint on principles, not on people, we should trust God to do great miracles. But if we have to cook them, then it is not for God's glory, but for our own. Which is it's a scary truth. Why did he do this? If he's faking it, is he not doing it for his own glory as opposed to God's glory? That was Pastor Loiso from Every Nation Church in PE. He was my pastor for a while while I was studying at NMU. He's an awesome guy, such a down-to-earth guy, and I really respect his perspectives. So there you have his. Then we have Pastor John Cho, who is all the way down from South Korea. He is a missionary who's come to raise up disciples here in South Africa to invest his time, his effort and energy into just raising up people who who want to share his heart for god and want to want to do his works and he's such a humble guy i really respect this man and this is what he says to me the incident just shows that there are many churches that have that are so fascinated about appeared phenomenon instead of revealing the will of god through the word i believe god still does miracles and works through spiritual gifts but I am concerned about the danger of some charismatic movements that lost the balance. In the video, pastors judged the extreme case of faking resurrection, but it's a matter of extreme. It's true that many church leaders out there are also exaggerating and fake miracles, healings and prophecies. It's true, it's true. I believe followers of Jesus should pursue personal holiness and intimacy with God through the word and prayer and celebrate the greatest miracle that happened in our heart which is the grace of God that transformed our stubborn self-seeking sinful heart to God loving obedient and a trusting heart we should focus more in encouraging each other to live by faith which is unseen the God in the Son of God instead of seeking only instant solutions through miracles which is, which is again, so on point. I, I really thought there was a lot of truth in that. And I hope that you could see some of the truth that was in that. I wanted to share this perspective with you because I feel this is a very pressing matter on my heart and way better to share than on a platform where there's endless reach. I wanted to share with you on the internet how I feel as a child of God about this situation that's going on and not in a judging tone but out of love for the people here in South Africa. I feel I've said enough on this point. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to engage with you. If you have any questions on the matter, I will more than gladly go and forward those questions to, to some of the leadership who I look up to to get answers if I feel I don't have the answer. But yes, that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, by all means, do so. I post a lot of content 
plus our lessons, how I feel about topics which are relevant to South Africans like this one and yeah just sharing about the things that go on in my life. South African culture is one of the main themes on my channel so stay tuned if you are South African or interested in South African culture but yes that is all from me thank you so much again for watching. Zam Jammer out.